one of the things I do require of my customers is when they're coming to me for a design to be made, I need basic information. Number one, the graphic that they're giving me or the idea that they're giving me, I need to know the colors. I need to know the size of the graphic. Okay, that's very crucial. Um, you don't want to get involved with uh, having uh, someone uh, coming up to you and say, I, I need this design and never define the size. They say they need a full chest. Okay, well, is that a full chest for a raglan cut um, uh, shirt or is it a full uh, cut adult, full cut youth, toddler, uh, full chest for those? Or, you know, you want them to define the size. Uh, be, uh, when I was first doing this um, uh, digitizing, uh, I would fail to ask that question. I would ask them, uh, I would ask them this basic questions like, uh, you know, um, you know, with the colors and where is it going to be placed, left chest. But if I created the design three and three quarters and it went on to a very small adult polo shirt, you know, the size was too big and then I had to resize it, okay? And that can cause more labor for you to do. So always get as much information from the client as possible, whether it's email communication or in person. Uh, have them make sure that they sign off on a, uh, an agreement form that everything's recorded. So if they say, okay, I need a three and a half inches, and then you created three and a half inches, did, and then sew out all the shirts, and they come back and say, oh, I wanted a four and a half. That's too small. Well, then, of course, you want to have that protection with you that shows the agreement of the size that you created. Okay, so always have that, those kind of inf those kind of pieces of information uh, at your at your disposal, and keep them on hand too, so you can go back to them year after year after year. So you have an idea of what the customer ordered last year, uh, the size and everything. Especially if you lost a design or your computer crashed and you're a new computer, or you forgot the colors. Okay, so it's always good to uh, notate all the information about the design. Okay, that's just a couple uh, preventative maintenance issues that you may want to do. Now, when looking for artwork, okay, I'll go to uh, I'll, I'll use clip art images. So, it, but we got uh, New Year's coming up. So, I'll look at clip art. Let me show you the different styles and different resolutions that we have out here. So, if I go to image search. And uh, let's see, right here, you can see underneath each image is a resolution size. You see on this one here, the image size is 1800 by 1200. Okay, that's a great image to use, less work that I need to do as far as uh, editing. Okay, but if we go down over to here, this Happy New Year, that's a 300 by 300 image. Okay, now the difference between this, let's go ahead and click on this and we'll save it. So I could bring it in so you'll be able to see. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I'll just save it to my desktop. Okay. Now let's go here and let's find another one. This is 500. There's a, there's a, I like to go to the tools here and I like to go to the size and I go to large, okay? And these ones here will actually be very easy to, to create. This one here, let's go and create that one. Now this is actually copywritten, so I, I'm not gonna not gonna do that one. Uh, let's find something else. So too, you know, the half tones and everything. You can't really do that with 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 uh, with rhinestones. But if you're doing this in embroidery, I'll show you how how you can do that. It's pretty simple. Right, let's go to this one here's too scrolly. I'm just looking for something similar to the one I have, like this one here. Happy New Year. Let's do this one here. Save image as we'll save that on the desktop. Another thing I like to look at too is if you go to um, usage rights here. This table this this tells me that uh, it all it'll only show me images that are labeled for reuse with modification. That uh, that gives me license to use it. Okay, these images here I can use all day long. Okay, they're not, and I can modify them too. So you can use those, and then I can label just for reuse without modification. You can see some of the same images that are up here. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and bring those images in. Okay. So here's the first one. First thing you notice when I bring it in, how small it is. 
Okay, this image, if I go to layout, you see it's only 1.18 by 1.18. The other thing you notice is when you zoom in, how cloudy the image is. You can see that these orange, the orange and the pinks and the blues have many different colors involved with it, and it's not very clean, and the green as well. Even the white background has some gray spec, uh, speckles in it. Let's bring in that other artwork. Let's set this over here. Let's bring in this one here. First thing you notice the size difference between the two artworks, okay? This being an 1800 by 1200 image actually comes in a lot larger. The resolution size is much, much heavier. When I zoom into it, you can see my colors are more uniform. I do have some lighter tones over here, okay? Uh, lighter and darker tones over here. Uh, but it, this is actually very easy to edit, okay? And we would definitely want to edit. No matter what size graphic you're bringing into the software, you are always going to want to edit in some degree. Okay. Now let's go ahead and show you some of these editing tools. One of the first steps I do is clean my artwork, kind of reduce all the colors down. If I click on this image and I go to color reduction, and I'm going to tell it to look up to 32 colors, and I'll hit filter, and you'll see that look at all the different colors of blue it sees and all the different colors of greens and uh, some yellow tones. Um, this is actually very, it's, it, it's got a lot of different colors in it, especially the pinks and all that stuff. So in, realistically, I have, let's see, I have a light blue, a dark blue, an orange, a lighter orange, a green, darker green, pink, darker pink, and then I have a white. Okay, that's nine colors. So if I choose to reduce this to nine colors, okay, and this is the after effect, this is the before, this is the after. You can see we're missing a couple shades of pink in there. Um, some, of the, uh, some of the darker orange tones have gone, and that's just because how bad of an image this is. I would have to increase this incrementally and keep hitting filter until I see all the colors, okay? So that's why you want to stay away from artwork that is actually this, this light. Now this is actually easy to create in stitches. I don't really, I mean, I don't really need that clean of an artwork. I can work with this just fine, just with simple digitizing techniques. Like the Happy, um, the happy New Year's is curls fonts. So that, that would be very easy to create as well as the streamers. Okay, let's go over to this other one now. Let's grab it. And bring it over. And in this one here, we have the pink. Uh, we have the, the the pink. We have the blue, the green, and the white. So let's go to color reduction. If when we go to filter up to 32 colors, let's see how many colors it actually sees. It'll probably see 32 because there's a lot of reds, a lot of red tones in, in that image, and a lot of greens. Let's reduce it down to our our very minimum amount of colors that we have. Okay. And you want to make sure the before is the same, the after is the same as before. And I scan it real quick. And I look at it. See, there's my blue, my green, my pink, and my white. I hit return, and I look at this image. You can see what I did. This is the before. You see how the spec, the, the, all the pixelation that's on the side here? And this is the after. You see how it cleans it up pretty nicely for us. Okay? I wouldn't worry about this so much. Okay, uh, they'll actually get lost in the stitches. Okay, so working with a graphic, uh, uh, a graphic design that's pretty clean, that's higher resolution, is very is very important. It actually saves you time in the creation mode. Okay, so we want both these designs. Okay, this one here, I'm going to have to pretty much create manually. Okay, only because it it was a very low resolution image. The first thing I'm going to do is actually click on layout. And we'll set our size for the graphic. So we want this to be we want this to be a full chest. So we go seven inches. Okay. And we'll do the same thing for Happy New Year. So that's already seven inches. Okay. Now this one here is ready to convert, just as it is. It's very simple to do. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on embroidery. And a lot of this is going to be all satin stitches. This is all going to be satin stitches, but I may choose to do Happy New Year and fill stitches. So let's go ahead and do, let's click on the green first. Let's go ahead and turning area is my curved zigzag, which I'm going to want for this. So let me go back. 
and let me go to turning area and I'm going to go to auto complete and I automatically set up my density to 5.5 stitches per millimeter my underlay is going to be uh, soft and my pole compensation is already there so I'm going to click on the green and click on enter you see now I have stitches okay so let's go ahead and down to this other streamer down here okay and uh, then we're going to do this one here and on this one here we're going to reduce our pull compensation thin it out a little bit okay so let's go ahead and go back to uh, let's deselect there we go and then we'll go back into embroidery and now we're going to use uniform area and then we'll do these smaller areas right here enter enter and then we'll do is actually I'm going to do a fill stitch over here because it's got 2015 right over top of it there it is and we're actually going to redo this one to a fill stitch as well as you can see I could race right through this design without any problems okay so now we're going to change it to blue okay this is going to be a fill stitch so I'm just going to do a uh, Let's go ahead and do a medium density. We'll do the blue here. Blue. Do all the circles. Okay. And then what I'll do is uh, now I'll go to a, uh, I'll go back to embroidery. I'll go to, uh, let's go to turning area. And let's go to 5% uh, on the pull compensation. We'll do a soft underlay. We hit enter. And now the last thing we want to do is we want to go back to embroidery. And we're going to do the fill stitches now for the pink. So I'm going to go uniform area. Choose fill stitch. Set my color. Do my underlay. And now, now I can go ahead and start doing this. So if you hold your control button, you can multi-select different objects. And once they're all selected, we'll just get the, we hit enter. And there it is. So let's turn off this. Let's go ahead and turn off our image. And we still have 2015 to do here yet, but let's just take a look at this through simulation mode. Okay. There we go. So there's our. Can everybody hear me now? Hello? Okay, excellent. Okay, good. All right, sorry about that. We're having connection issues here. All right, so what I just did is I converted all the objects, and, let, and it, what I was talking about is actually opening up the simulated view so I could see if there's any other things I must do with this artwork. And right away, you could see I have some thread trims that have to be done, like between this, these two blues from the where it jumps from 
R to W and the E Y to A. All these have to be imported, okay? So what I'm going to do to do that is I always keep the simulation screen open, and then I'll come over here to my working window, and I'll click on the blue, and up here is my thread trim. I'm just going to select yes, and you should see it disappear. See that? Now, since we did that, we're also going to do a lock stitch, a classic lock stitch in place. That will make sure the stitches do not unravel. Then we'll click on this W here. And again, we'll do a thread trim there. And we'll do a lock stitch. And we'll do the Y. And you always want to see this in the, in the simulated view because it doesn't show you in the working window of where these, uh, where these thread trims are not present. So I'm going to click on the A. And then we go to yes to thread trim. Classic on that. And then we'll look and see if we need anything else. I think that's got it. The only other thing is the, how thick this this uh, this part is. So I'm just going to change the pull compensation from 15 to 10, and that that thinned it out pretty nicely for me. Okay, everything else looks pretty good. Okay, and I may choose to decrease the pull compensation on the Y just to get it away from the on that, and and also on the N. Uh, just to get it away from the horn a little bit more. There we go. I think, I think that'll work. When that pulls into the garment, that'll look pretty good. And, of course, all we'd have to do is 2015, which I would just enter that text in immediately. Okay, so that's how, you, that's how simple it is to create a design from an already real good artwork. Okay? Now, on this one here, it's going to take us a little bit of a challenge. Okay? We have to create this. Okay? And it wouldn't be too hard. All we got to do is we got to use a couple tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose green. All right. And I'm going to choose turning area. I'm actually going to choose a path with zigzag. Set my pull comp and set my density. Set my uh, this. And then I'm going to set my pull compensation. Your underlay is going to be soft. Do all these things first. And then go to manual. See, because the image is so dirty, using the magic wand is not going to select much. Okay. If I, click up, if I click on it, it doesn't see all of it. So therefore, I have to create this manually, okay? So I'm going to go to Manual, and I'm just going to draw this out. Now let me just thin this out a little bit. Right now I'm at 50. Let's go to 12. There we go. So I'm going to get maybe uh, 24 on the width. Enter, enter, and you start creating all the parts for it. This is all the inside part of the streamer. All right, now what I'll do, I'll click on this one here and add a border to it. So the, let me see, that is a border. So let me just, uh, all right, so I would have to put a border on that. So let me, let me think about this for a minute. I'm going to draw this out a little better, okay? There's a way you can actually create this. I'm going to actually create the graphic, okay? Because converting, I'm going to have to do two stitches, and that's just going to take a lot of time. Uh, instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Artwork. I'm going to go to Bezier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this out. So what I'm doing is I'm staying right in the middle of the edge here. Right, right here, I'm going to cut across. It's, I'm just drawing the shape. you got to see it as a shape. Don't worry about the details yet. You're just seeing it as a shape. What this is going to do, this is actually going to put, this is going to make a vector for me, which I can use to convert it to stitches. 
There it is. So I'm just going to change it to green. And then I can just go ahead and convert. Use a smart design to a pattern stitch. And then I can add the border that I need. And we're just going to do a running stitch. And the color will be a darker green. Let's try with a satin stitch. And we'll change the density to 5 and the thickness of that to 8. I'm sorry, uh, I got a couple questions here. Can you hear me? My, apparently my audio is going in and out. Okay. So now all I got to do is create this stuff right here. So it knows I just go to zigzag. I make sure I have the darker green selected. This is the detail. And then you just, and then we're going to make a smaller one. I'm going to 12. And we'll just come through here with these little details. And what I did is I turned off my embroidery. So let's go ahead and turn it on now. And you can see this. So you can see the struggle. Now I still have to, I still have a lot of work to do. I got to round these out by grabbing the nodes here. And then I can round them out by just stretching the bezier grip. So you can see how much work is involved if you uh, if your customer comes in with uh, uh, not camera ready art, you know, uh, or art that's actually a lower pixelation. I mean, I would have to go through this and round out all these nodes here because a bezier grip requires the drawing, the artist drawing to actually control the mouse. And I didn't do this. I want to show you the little little intricacies on it. You see all these are twisted here. So there's a lot of a lot of work. But once I get this one done, then I would copy and simply paste this one down at the bottom. Okay. Now the Happy New Year, I could do uh, I'll do it as a graphic since it's got an inside color and outside color. And this is basically curls font. So, by the way, if you don't have Curls Font, uh, you probably want to download it from dafont.com or just, or just uh, Google uh, free Curls Fonts. And you know, there's about a half a dozen websites that will come up that allow you to download for free. A lot of fonts cost a lot of money. So, there we go. So, I'm going to bold this. I'm going to go happy. And then we'll go New Year. Center justify. We'll make our text like 2.25. And that'll come in. And then we'll, we'll make it blue. Okay, so now what we're going to do is you have some tools here. Okay, I want to explain these tools. I talked to a lady yesterday about these tools. Uh, first thing I want to do is actually um, want to decrease the spacing between words. Okay, so oops, let me turn on the vector. Okay, when we click on something like this now, I'm going to ungroup this, and uh, I'm, I'm going I'm to grab New Year. Slide it up so it's just about right where the other one is. And then I'm going to grab New, slide it in. And now we'll highlight all of it. And shrink it to size. So let me see if I could bring this right in. You can see with the right font, you can actually recreate this image pretty easy. So I'll resize. Okay. So let's turn off our images, and now we have this. So now we have this. So I'm gonna let's get rid of this guy. This guy's in my way. This is just. There we go. So now you can highlight this and then convert it to a fill. All right. And the color, then since it's already selected still, you want to choose your color. And I'll, I'll choose a light blue. And then you could border this. Just highlight. And I can go over to my object manager. 
And here's all the first part, first part of the design. Here's all my blues. So I'm going to go down to the last one. And then here's your border control right here. So I'm going to do a running stitch. Okay, because there's just not enough height there. And I'll choose my color to be a dark blue. And there you go. Probably want to do maybe two passes on the run stitch just to darken it up a little bit more. And uh, that control is right here. Repetition. I'm going to go to three. It'll darken it up for me. There we go. So let's take a look at that one. Let's go to simulation. You can see now all I've got to do is do the uh, inside of the A here. Okay, and uh, to do that, you're just going to do that manually. Stay right on the edge. Make sure you set the color correctly. And then I'm going to do three repetitions. And there we go. Okay. Okay, any questions so far? Let's see, we got some questions here. Will this software work together with Rhinestone? Yes, yeah, the same software. The same way the same methodology I use to convert the stitches between preparing artwork and converting them over to Spangle or Rhinestones, I can do the same thing. Matter of fact, we covered that last week in our in my in my uh, tech talk and then. Uh, it's the same technique. All I'm doing is converting them to stitches in this one, okay? Uh, I would convert them over to rhinestones uh, in the hot fixer. Or if you have both on, on, on hand, you, you, could, you could do different things, like uh, maybe mix the media. So instead of doing like embroidery here, right? Let me go ahead and get rid of these. One of the cool things about having uh, a rhinestone machine is actually making your designs even more embellished with another uh, with another media. Okay, we just got Happy New Year there. Let me turn off my commands. And uh, what I want to do is I want to outline this Happy New Year with with uh, rhinestones. Okay, uh, you can actually do this if you have both the Sierra and the Hotfix R. Okay, but you need a machine to run it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the embroidery. Turn back on, and my vector's already on. Let me get rid of my vectors here. And you can see this is a graphic, okay? So now, when I have my graphic up, all I need to do is, uh, I'm going to actually delete these. I need a vector, and I need a clean vector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Happy New Year here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. And I can create a vector from this, real simple, okay? It's going to be a clean vector because I created nice, nice crisp stitches out of it. So if I highlight the whole thing and right click, I got this convert to vector. Just hit OK on that. And now you can see I have a vector file that looks just the same as my as my embroidery file. Okay? Now with this, I want to make this, I want to put a contour line around it. I'll just, I'm, going to, I'm just going to show you what I'm doing here, and then we'll show you uh, how to do it. Let's go a little bit bigger. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to change this to just an outline. Now that it's an outline, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Hotfix, and I'm going to put a clear bead in there. Yep. So I'll go to our SS6 rhinestone, and I'll add a clear bead to my bead bar. And if I highlight this, since it's a vector, I can use Smart Design. And I go to the hotfix side, and I add the bead line. OK. Let's go ahead and turn on our embroidery now. And you can see what we got. Let's turn the background color to black so you can see. And you can see what you can do with both. With both. You can make a pretty easy mixed media looks to your designs, okay? Now, the way you would do this, of course, you would have all your rhinestone transfers already completed, ready to go, and then you would do your embroidery. When the embroidery comes off the machine, you take it over to heat press, and that's when you heat press the rhinestones, because if you allow that shirt to relax after all those stitches, 
you'll have to stretch the shirt to make the rhinestone design uh, line up, okay? But if you just unhoop, and uh, if you hoop them correctly, you're not stretching the material. After your embroidery, you set it right on the heat press. Heat press it for about five to seven seconds, and that causes the stitches to relax again. Peel your transfer sheet uh, backing, put it on there, and then heat press, okay? That's how you could do an easy mixed media project using the Sierra software, okay? So yes, that's, uh, hopefully that answers your question. Um, I have Hotfix error. What do I need to, to do to add to my, fa to my software? What is the price? So you want to, do you do embroidery right now, uh, May Mayra? Yes, you do? Okay, and what, does, what software are you using in, for embroidery? How are you doing your digitizing? Here, we'll, we'll come in Forte, yeah. Okay, well, what you want to get, the, the way that it works for Sierra is you would get a new installation password. Now, your dongle key, your software dongle key, the red dongle key everybody has, uh, has every version and upgrade and component that Sierra ever made. Based upon your purchase, they issue you a licensed uh, password. Okay, that's that SPP file that you used when you first installed. That unlocks all the functions that you purchased. So if you add Liberty, Stitch Error Liberty to your already existing Hotfix Error key, you would, have, you would uninstall your software, reinstall with the new installation password, and then you'll have both just like I have. See, you can see up top here I have embroidery as well as Hotfix, okay? Now, I don't know what the price is for that. You'll have to call your salesperson for that. Um, but it's definitely uh, worthwhile, especially adding bling to your embroidery. It increases the value of the embroidery. It also increases the value of your bling. You're mixing the media. You're giving a comprehensive look to something that's very that's very chic. Okay, so definitely definitely do it. Um, there's no way of doing it. No way of bringing bling software into Forte or um, or Wilcom. So. So it is very easy. It is, um, I mean, creating this from a graphic that I pulled off the internet, it's very easy. It's just a couple tools, okay? A couple steps, okay? Step number one, let's choose your graphic. Okay. So let me grab uh, this one here. Step number two is edit my graphic, okay? And that's reducing the colors, okay? Because every graphic you bring in is going to have a multitude of colors than what you see on screen. I have four colors. I have the white background, the pink, the blue, and the green. Reduce it down to four colors. And I'm just going to do Happy New Year from this one here. So it's size your graphic as well. That's your other step that you want to do. It's going to make an 8.5. 8 okay. And uh, then convert, convert your, your objects is step number three. So I'm going to go to embroidery. I'm going to choose uniform area. I'm going to choose my color. And I'm not going to even stick with the, this. I'm going to stick with a, I'm going to go with a lighter blue. Set my uh, underlay. Go to uh, auto complete. Hold my control button down. Click on all the parts I want to convert to this stitch style. Enter, adds the stitches, there you go. So now what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go to turn off the embroidery, get back to my graphic, go to Hotfix, all right, I'm going to add my stone that I want to use. Let's go ahead and um, let's bring that out with a clear crystal. Still have my graphic up, I'm going to choose Path. Magic wand again. Click on all the graphics. See, I didn't even need to convert it to a vector this time. But I wanted to show you how you can convert objects to vectors, okay? And then enter. There's my stones. Let's turn on the embroidery. Turn off the image. Let's turn on my uh, background color to black. View. Simulation. 
Okay, then we have to do our, our thread trims. Okay, you open up your simulation so you can see where you need to have thread trims. You can see I need it between the H and the N, so I'll go to N, go yes. All right, set the lock stitch. We got E and W we got we to gotta put in, so I go to E, yes, lock stitch classic, and then the E and the R, yes, I think it's A and R. Now it's the R. Let me try it again. There it is. Classic. Okay, it's done. Okay, very simple to do. Okay. Now there's there is a benefit of actually uh, even taking this a step further. Okay, let's get in. Uh, let's get and delete my rhinestones and my embroidery, and let's say that the customer loves the Happy New Year. They want it in two colors. Okay. Like maybe a pink and uh, pink and purple or something like that. Okay, so how what would I do to do that? Okay, number one, you need clean graphic. Okay, your graphic must be reduced in color in order for this next step to work. Okay, let me see. I got a question here. Is this the same software that makes pictures convert to embroidery? Uh, yes, yes. You can actually do photo stitch uh, on the Sierra software. It's very simple to do. You take any. You can even do it with the hotfix R too, but you need a, you need to add on components called um, effects pack, and the effects pack allows you to take a photograph and convert the photograph uh, to rhinestones. Everybody has seen the Obama shirts with rhinestones and all that. That's all done with the effects pack. Okay, it's very uh, very unique uh, look to your to your rhinestones. It costs a lot. <laughs> okay, because you use a lot of rhinestones to do those type of artworks. So you got to be in a in a a market that will actually pay for pay for that. Usually those shirts will go for fifty or sixty dollars. You're not going to go to a craft show and sell a fifty or sixty dollar shirt. Okay? No matter how good it looks. Okay? All right. Let me see. Uh, the other question I got here is 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 this better to do than to do auto stitch? The auto stitch, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, we also got a. Um, uh, I have a business card that has a lot of background beyond what I'd want to embroider. Is there a way I could send you the file? Uh, yeah, you can send me the file at a Gripton, a g r i p t o n at coldessie dot com, and uh, we can actually use that. Okay, if you send it right away, I could probably get in there and, and use that uh, for uh, show you how to do it. All right, so. It's A as in Apple, G as in George, R, I, P as in Paul, T as in Thomas, O, N as in Nancy, at coldesty.com. Okay. All right, so multiple colors, okay? Doing multiple colors for this Happy New Year, okay? What I first want to do is actually I need to reduce my colors, which I already did in this graphic. The second step is I need to convert it to a vector. When I convert it to a vector, it's very simple to do. Number one, I got to reduce my colors, okay, which I already did. And, I, and if I hit filter here, it'll only show me four colors. And the before and after will look exactly the same. As soon as it scans it, there it is. It's going to ask you what the transparent layer is going to be. Whatever's listed here, okay, it's got to be one of the four colors or the, or the no transparent, which is this X here, is going to be deleted from the file. So since I don't need the white background, I'm just going to let it choose white, and it will vectorize. Okay, now it's a vector. So once the return button turns green, you can click on it. It's now a vector file. Okay, you can see that it did a pretty good job. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all the stuff that I don't need. You have these great tools in this software that will allow you to work a lot smarter than most softwares. Okay, so now what I could do is I'm going to make this as pink as I can make it. I'm going to choose a color. Let's see if I could choose a, a better pink. There are no better pinks listed here, so I have to make one. So if I double click on the maroon, I can go to the pink wheel, choose it. 
And now we'll just select it here. There we go. So now what we want to do, we want to divide it in half, okay? As a vector, we have this tool called split vector, which will allow me to divide this right in half. So I'm going to bring a guideline down. This is where I'm going to split the H. So I'm just going to go straight across. Okay, let's go with the A. We'll go to split vector again. And yes, you do got to do one letter at a time on this. We'll go to the P. Split vector. Just draw a line straight across where you wanted to divide it. And I'll show you what we'll do afterwards. And then, oop, let's do the P one more time. You got to go from neutral area to neutral area. It doesn't matter that I'm overlapping. It's if I only select the Y, it's only going to cut the Y. Okay, so now let's show you what I did. So the bottom half of this is all going to be pink, or purple. So I'm going to select it. And then we'll choose purple. If I have a purple here. And we need the bottom of this one too. There you go. So you can make multiple colors. Then once I do that, then I can convert it all over to stitches. Okay? So there's a couple things that you can utilize. There we go. To get different looks out of your embroidery. Okay? So let me see if I got that file yet. One second. Just give it a second for my outlook to start up here. Mm, hasn't come in yet. Oh, five emails. Okay, so I'm going to save this to my desktop. Oh, I can see what you got here. What a nightmare. So let's go ahead and save it to my desktop. Let's go ahead and bring that in. Okay. So I'm guessing uh, that perishable food service is what you want out of this. With the uh, logo in the in the P. Okay. So. It's very simple to do. The first thing I need to do is I need to size this, okay? The gra the graphic is actually on the business card, okay? And I gotta pull it out of the business card. And it's very simple to do, okay? And let me just show you how, how to do this, okay? To resize just this, what is this going on a hat or is it going on a shirt, left chest or full chest? left chest. Okay, so we want it to be about four inches across, okay? So what I'll do is, since I, since my, my bounding box, see my bounding box is on the edge, it's not touching the, the image, when you go to layout, you need to choose set size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab from the furthest left, and I'm going to draw a line all the way over to the furthest right, and what I just measured is what's highlighted here. So I want this to be four inches width, okay? Now if I measure that, you'll see that it is four inches. So if I go to view, I go to measure, I go from here, draw a line straight across to where that P is, and you can see it's right about four inches there. Okay? All right. So now the way you do this, Bob, is that you if I magic one, I don't even know if it's going to even pick it up because of the colors that print has. Okay, if I go to here and I go to uh, let's go, let's just go and see auto complete. See, it doesn't even see it, okay, because there's so many different colors. It's a photograph. There's so many different pixels. So what i got to do is i got to do a simple um, text, okay? So let's go to, um, let's go, it's a Times New Roman font, if, I believe. So if I go to lettering here, I don't think I have Times New Roman, but I have it in true type. So let's go to Times New Roman. Also, another good tool to have, one of the hardest things to do is identifying a font that you see on screen. And uh, 
I like to use font, uh, I, uh, font ID, which is a good one here. Uh, I don't have it on this computer. I have it on my Apple Mac. But uh, it's actually a great tool. What it does is you just highlight whatever font you have on your screen, and it will actually identify with the top ten possibilities. Usually it gets really close. And once you get really close, you can actually search out different variations of that font. You can find it real easy. So where's Times New Roman? It's very important that you find the right font. Yeah, it's going. It's just going that extra extra step. Yeah, I think this is going to be. A, what I'll do is I'll look at image like the A. That looks close. The the I. You see the surf is going to the left. Okay, and that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so this is the one I want to go with. Okay, and I'm gonna just type it out. P A R I S H A B L E S. Hold on. For some reason, it clicked off of it. Embroidery, lettering, true type. Oh, God. <laughs> Hold on one second. See so what happens when you have a wheel mouse. P A R I S H A B L E S. I'll click on enter, the text is going to come in. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this in here just like this. I'm going to line up. I'm pretty close with the size. Okay. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze it in. Get as close as possible. Okay, so now you have these grips. Let's move this over a little bit. You have these grips. Now this P needs to be resized, okay? Just the P. It's kind of uh, it's kind of a, a exaggerated font right there. So now I'll just move things over, line them up. Don't worry about being exactly the height. You, you want it to be legible, okay? Most important, you want it to be legible. And uh, I think this will be fine right here. Even though it's not exactly the right font, I think it'll work, okay? Don't get tempted to start sliding these up, okay? It's a lot easier sliding the whole thing up, okay, on that baseline. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to – all right, so let me go ahead and set my – all my settings here, okay? Okay. Um, if you click on the drop-down list here, we need to set our pull compensation, our underlays, and our density, okay? Now this lettering is actually an inch long, so I want to go about 5.65 inch stitches per millimeter on the underlay. And I'll keep it red just so I can see it. Pull compensation, so you can see my narrow column stitches are real narrow versus the original artwork. So I'm actually going to go a little heavy on the pull compensation. Always use proportional. We'll talk about that in another in another segment, and we'll we'll go to seven on the pull compensation. And now the underlay, uh, we need an underlay. So underlay is actually going to be centered. Okay. Now the S is actually a problem. So I'll show you why the S is a problem, and that's because of stitch direction. There's a you can see all these yellow lines right here. It's a stitch direction uh, error. And what we'll do, we'll just reassign these stitch directions. This one here needs to be down here. You see how it changes my stitch look. True type fonts are kind of the hardest fonts to work with. Only because they're going by the code that the artist used when creating it. And it's probably up here. You see all this mess of, of stitch direction lines. See, now, now I just moved that one, and it's actually fixed my problem. Okay. All right, so now what we're going to do, now we're going to finagle this even further, okay? So let's go ahead and go and see now the S. I'm not going to even worry about this S. I'm, I'm going to copy and paste this one over. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, resize this down a little bit, make it a little bit easier to see. Get these things lined up a little better. Okay, so let's bring this A down. All right, that looks good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it again. I'm going to set my thread trims to be between letters, my lock stitches to be between letters. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to explode into characters. Okay, I do this for a certain purpose. Okay, what I want to do is I don't, I don't want to have to find that stitch again. I'm going to delete that one and copy and paste this one and place it in place. Okay, now a couple things I could do as well is highlight and I could make these fatter. Okay. By doing that, I can actually get the look of the font that I'm using. Even though I'm very close, I'm not right on the money. But by doing, by divide, by separating the uh, the letters, I can actually mim I, I can actually morph these into a better looking font. Like this P. I'm real close on the P, but it's just not right there. So I'm going to bring this down, and we put a little bit of weight on it. Just like that. There we go. So it's not actually cheating. The name of the font finder is font ID uh, identifont. Okay, easy way to get rid of the connectors and the dot. Yes, there is an easier way to get it if you click on it, and you go to. Uh, I think it's explode. There we go. And there we go. So now what we got to do is we want to make all this white. So we'll highlight. And then we'll go down here. And in the block, the body, we change it to white. You always do it on your object inspector, okay? Now it's white. Okay. Now the rest of it's pretty simple. Okay. Now the rest of it is actually just digitizing. Okay. So watch. If I go to if I go to embroidery and I go to uniform fill, I'm going to choose the red color. Uh, I'm not going to use any pull compensation, and I'm going to use manual. I'm just going to draw this apple out. Okay. Very simple to do. Yep. I'm going to overlap the white a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, so now what we want to do, we want to put that behind the P. So set my stitch direction line. Right click on it, go to change order. Where's it at? Well, actually, I can't do it with embroidery, I have to do it with images. What I can do is actually, I'm going to bring it all, I'm going to bring the red and sequence it to the top. So that'll stick it right behind that. All right, see how that looks. Okay, see how it's behind it? And now we'll now we'll create the rest of it. So I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do this green next, okay? Again we're gonna use embroidery, uniform area, we're gonna choose the green we want, and I'm gonna create this. Enter. Go to select object. I'm just going to make this node desk down right here a little bit. There we go. Set my stitch direction. And now we'll go ahead and do this stem. The stem is it's the last part. I'm going to use a white. I'm going to use a gray. And for that, I'm just going to use. Uh, let's go ahead and use a um, column. The way you use column is, let's turn off the embroideries, all right, is you start from one side, work the other side. And you're making your own column stitches here. Enter. All right, so let's see. Uh, now we got the sequence one more time, okay? Those last two colors, it doesn't matter where the green is, but the white has got to be after the, uh, after the red, I think. Let me see how it looks in the image. It's actually on top of the red. So I want 
this to come up and I'm going to place it right underneath the red. And I also need it on top of the green. So let's bring the green up and put it after the red. So the color change is going to be uh, red, green, and then the gray, and then, then finally white. And there you got it. Okay, so now what I want, let me see, is, yeah, it's behind the piece. So let's turn off the image. Let's turn on our 3D view. Change our background color so we could see all the parts of the design. And we might want to just adjust this a little bit more. Maybe put a texture in there because it's really lightweight. So I want to put a, like a leaf texture in there in my fill pattern. And you can get decorative with this. So let's go ahead and do like something like this. Okay. Simulated view, and that looks pretty good. Okay. Okay, and then the last part we would have to do. So there's no easy way of doing that, Bob, except for just creating it through old school techniques. Okay. Uh, once we do that, then of course we could like straighten things out, like just move this B over just a little bit, you know, give space it out a little bit better, and that's it. Okay. Any questions at all? We covered a lot of territory, even technique, um, even created a custom work here. Uh, Bob, I'll email you this finished product out to you, okay? So you have it. Uh, is there any questions, uh, any final questions? Uh, Randy, I'm sorry, Randy. Okay. Well, I, I hope you all had a great time. Next week is Christmas week. I think we're going to have uh, Sean actually training on the tech talk next week so it was my pleasure actually doing this this is this is a this is a great class um, I, I don't I won't talk to you anytime soon so if you uh, if you don't call tech support I will act, I'll wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy New Year good seeing you guys talk to you later